one. Morning, guys. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sabbath. It's nice to see you, to see you now. Nice. <laughs> I hope all of you guys are ready to join us as we do praise and worship for today's service. Yes. Again, like last time, if you're in bed, this is a sign to come out of bed. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Gather up, you kids. Gather up everybody in the house. Let's come together on one accord into one but, room. Yes. And let us praise the Lord. Let us praise. Let us praise. So, Welcome to Revival House where we raise leaders. To change, change the world. world and now you're one of them come on then put your praise on before you put your praise on we have a word from second chronicles 27 and it says our god you drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people israel and gave it as a permanent possession to the descendants of your friend abraham so we are the descendants of abraham and God calls Abraham his friend. So I just want to let you guys know that, you know, we are friends of God. And he's able to drive out our enemies from the land. He's able to drive out disease from this land. He's able to drive out those that hopelessness, that sense of hopelessness and feeling depressed and feeling like there is no hope. He's able to drive out those thoughts if it just commit your life to God you become his friend amen and the first song is friend of God welcome
must be friends. I am a friend of. I am a friend of. I am a friend of God. He is your friend. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me
Thank God he's there for us. Amen. He calls us his friend and he's there for us. Therefore, wait upon the Lord because he has not forgotten you and he does not grow weary of hearing from you. So keep calling upon the Lord. Amen. Now we're going to, I want you to lift up your hands and clap. Woo, come on. I'm going to dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. Because the greater one lives inside of me and his name is, his name is, his name is Jesus. Hey, I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a gonna dance and pray it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what comes the greater one greater one lives inside his name is jesus his name is jesus i'm born a winner i'm born a winner i No weapon formed against me hey! shall ever prosper. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. More than victorious. I'm a hero. 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 I'm a hero.
Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you have kept us this far. We thank you, Lord, that today, this morning, we are alive, oh Father. There are those who have gone to be with you, God, but you saw it fit to give us the breath of life this morning. And we give you all the glory and the honor, Lord, because we have breath. We know that you have good plans. You have plans for us, oh Lord. There are things that you want us to still do, Lord, in this in this world, oh Father. Father, and we worship you, Lord, because you are a good God. We thank you and we declare in you we live and we move and we have our being. We declare that Jesus, the greater one, he lives in us. And therefore, we are victorious in all these things that we see. We walk by faith and not by sight because you are a good God, because you call us friend, because you love us. Hallelujah. We thank you as we wait for you, Lord. We know that your presence is here to touch us and to heal us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You are our strength, Father. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no
hospital of God, we reach out and cry because you are our strength, you are our strength, you are our strength. Father, we declare you are our strength, you are the strength of this nation, oh Lord, you are the strength of the vulnerable in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the strength of the ethnic minority. You are the strength of the white people, Lord, the Caucasians, oh Lord. You are the strength of the black people, oh Lord. You are the strength of the Asian people, oh Lord. You are the strength of the, of the Americans. You are our strength, oh God. Over the Indians, you are our strength, oh Lord. Oh, yeah, the
and understanding that in moments like this, oh Lord, that we can stand because of your Holy Spirit. We say we love you, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We say we love you, Lord. We say we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. In moments like this, we say we love you, Lord, because you are in control. You are in control. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let it overflow. first time to sing it but let's sing that bit of singing I love you Lord 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 I touch our hearts that they will be open to receive your word this morning oh god and father we declare that your word that will go forth that it will bear root in our hearts oh father we declare that your word that you sent forth it will not return to your word but will accomplish that which you have sent it to accomplish in our lives we declare that man shall not live by bread alone but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of the lord and father lord even as we go into a time lord where we will hear the word of god being spoken father we declare that our hearts will be like the fertile soil that receives the seed and the and grows and sprouts and bears fruits 
and is not choked by the cares of this world and is not choked by the fear is not choked by all the news that we are hearing father god that the word that will come forth this morning that it will bring strength to our bones and give life to our mortal bodies in the mighty name of jesus we declare that we will receive the report of the lord that we will meditate on the word of god we will not just meditate on the news out there but we will trust in the name of the lord because the name of the lord is a strong tower that the righteous run to and they are safe and here we are here we are lord as your children we run to you and we are safe we are safe we dwell in the secret place of the most high we abide under the shadow of the almighty and we will say of the lord he is our refuge he is our fortress hallelujah we look up to the hills from where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. We just want to encourage you as we get into the word to look up to the hills. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes to the hills. Where does your help come from? Your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He's got this. He's got everything under control. Hallelujah. Welcome to the word. Thank you for worshipping with us. Praise the Lord. Once again, wonderful viewers. I believe that the Lord has kept you well since we last met over this platform. And I believe as we always say every morning and every time we meet, we say this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall be glad and rejoice in it. What a wonderful day once again to gather here to share the word of God and to encourage one another, to build one another and also to speak a word of life to us. So we give God all the glory and I believe you are, you are, you are ready and I am grateful that you have always been faithful in, uh, in supporting this broadcast and why not for you for your support for your encouragement uh, for your continuous uh, for the testimony that are coming from you people that keep us going I always say that I especially as pastors the, the testimonies is, is, is a is an oil that keep us going when we hear what the Lord is doing so God to bless you and let's share the word and uh, let's open it with our prayer before even we hear what the, what the Lord has in store for us this morning, uh, let's bow our head and pray. Uh, everlasting Father, King of glory, once again we bow before you. We thank you, dear Lord, for yet another opportunity that you have given unto us that we may gather together as your children and share the bread that you have prepared for us. We are grateful, dear Lord, O oh God, for you have shielded us, you have taken care of us. Yes, the plans of the enemy may have to shift us and to uh, uh, to destroy everything. But the Lord of God, we say, well, why not for you? Our enemy would have swallowed us alive. But we are still standing. Because you have been faithful. Because you have been good. And surely the scriptures have been fulfilled. That truly fire goes before you, consuming all our foes on every side. That even mountain melt like wax in the mention of your name. We have a testimony that there are so many mountains that were standing on our way that has melted. We have seen you make way where there is no way. We have seen you lift. We have seen you even dethrone uh, those who oppose your ways. And we have this testimony that you are good. Your mercy is enduring forever. So dear Lord, oh God, even as we share the scripture this morning, we, we, we welcome your presence and we pray for every person who is listening, uh, even who is watching this broadcast. And I pray, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you may strengthen them, that you may watch over them, that the Lord of God, no matter what they may be going through, we know that you are a miracle worker. Visit them and do something new in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right. Before we, we, we engage in the word, uh, as, uh, as is our tradition, is we are going to, uh, to share uh, the, the, the prophetic word of the week. And I believe that this is the word that is going to encourage us. Uh, it's a word that the Lord has written in my spirit. And I believe this word 
It may not be for you, but it may be somebody who is listening. But I always say, the word of God it, it, it has no copyright. You can believe it. Believe it is yours. Take it, and it will make a difference in your life. The prophetic word of the week comes from the book of Psalms 125. It says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of the wicked wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hand to iniquity. May the Lord bless that word. This is a prophetic word of the week. And the Lord is saying through this uh, song uh, in the book of Psalms 125, and I don't want you to see it as a historical chapter or a historical verse. I want you to see it as to now. There's a word of God that is speaking to us for us this season at this time or even maybe this day. Uh, and he's saying, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abide forever as the mountains around Jerusalem. So the Lord surround his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of the wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Let the righteous reach, lest the righteous reach out their hands to the iniquity. What the Bible is telling us here, and I believe that the reason why God is giving us this word, especially the season we are in right now, there is so much that is going out there. Uh, you may be hearing it from the news, you may be hearing all this, uh, the, this uh, conspiracy theories, and maybe sometimes you don't know what is to, which is which, or who, who do you believe? And listen, no matter what it might be out there, whether there are, there are plans from the, from the wicked one, whether there have been a conspiracy to destroy you, whether there have been conspiracy to destroy your business, whether there's a conspiracy to destroy your family, whether there are plans even to bring you down, whether there are whichever plans may be out there that is being waged against you, whether by institution, whether by individuals, whether by a, a, a corporation, whatever you might be facing right now, God is telling us, those who trust him, they shall be like Mount Zion. You are like Mount Zion. And my saying is just like Jerusalem is surrounded by mountain, so the Lord surrounds us. So listen, it, it, we need to have that picture in our mind, and I believe that's why the Lord is speaking to us in this season. We must have this picture in our mind that no matter the news, no matter the, plan, uh, the plans of the enemy, no matter the, uh, the report, we have this understanding that God, we are just like uh, just like the mountains around Jerusalem. So the Lord surrounds his people. So we are surrounded and we are not defeated. We are surrounded. And listen, no matter the arrows that may be shot at your, at your direction, have this conviction that as Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains, so the Lord surrounds you. And that's the prophetic word of the week. That do not fear. Do not fear the report. Do not fear what might happen. Because the Lord, sur the Lord surrounds us just like as the mountains around Jerusalem. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So right now, let's go to the word, of, uh, the, the, the word that the Lord has prepared for us. That was a prophetic word. If the first time that you're watching us in this broadcast, Arise and Shine broadcast, we always have uh, the prophetic word of the week. And um, uh, we, we do it every Sunday. Uh, so if you're the first time that you're watching this broadcast, that is how we do, uh, how we do it. There is a prophetic word from every preacher who preaches from the uh, from this pulpit. Every uh, the, the, the beginning of the service uh, on Sunday, it begins with a prophetic word. And before we hear the scriptures, we go to the reading of the word uh, that the Lord has prepared for us today. I would like also number one to say thank you. I almost forgot to do that. I want to help me appreciate the media team that has been doing amazing, amazing job uh, uh, from correcting the information, uh, putting it together. They have been doing an amazing, amazing, amazing job. Uh, coming back, uh, also coming to the Sunday school, the teachers, they have been doing awesome, awesome, awesome work they have been doing. Uh, bringing the program, we started the, uh, the children uh, service on Saturday and it's been amazing. Yesterday, uh, uh, it went even a bar higher 
You see the dedication of the children, the dedication of the teachers, the dedication of the media people, the dedication of also of the parents to be able to do that. I remember uh, when my daughter was asked to uh, to present, uh, it, it's not straightforward as maybe you may see it on the telly because there's a lot of repeat. Maybe you, you, you record the first one, maybe it didn't appear well, so you keep on doing it. But we thank God that all this thing is for the glory of the Lord. So I appreciate the parents who have been doing a tremendous job partnering together with the Sunday school teachers and, and the media team doing a great work. Coming back even to the daily broadcast, Arise and Shine broadcast, we have different pastors, different leaders uh, who are preaching every other day. Uh, on Fridays, we have Friday night prayers. It's, it's amazing seeing uh, the worship team partnering together with the uh, uh, with the people who are reading prayer. It's been amazing. And uh, we can say that, it, yes, we sympathize and we, we, we sorrow with the people who have lost their loved ones, who have lost their job, who things have not been well during this lockdown. But we can all look back and say, in this crisis, it has been for our increase in so many ways. They have been, uh, uh, the, the, the Sunday school are, are coming up stronger, the youth are coming up stronger, the, the, the worship team is coming up stronger, uh, the, the food pantry is coming up stronger. Yesterday, I have a testimony. Uh, uh, that was on Friday, uh, a family visited, uh, came with, uh, to give food uh, to, the, to, our food bank, uh, to our food bank. And this family, it happened that the same day they arrived with two bags, these two bags, uh, it's amazing, there's a testimony on how God worked. This family had been intending to bring food to our food bank. And then what happened is that uh, they, I, I, I was not there to pick, pick up the food, uh, the food stuff. So yesterday, uh, no, no, on Friday, they called me, they asked me, Pastor, are you in church? I told me, yes, I'm in church. So they brought these two big bags and uh, with all manner of goodies. And then the same time they called me, I had a call from somebody uh, who works with the, with the council. And he, um, she tells me that right now, I have two families who are desperately need food. And uh, at the moment, the council will not be able to help them because they have to wait until uh, some of them, uh, uh, they will not be in a position to be helped. So is there a way you can help? So I said, yes. It's so amazing that the two bags, and I want to show you the testimony of the Lord, is that the two bags are going to those two families. One of the families, some, 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 uh, some few days ago, they slept hungry. But you see the God's faithfulness. And somebody was thinking about them, and the two bags now are going to help these two different families. So may God each bless you. For all of you who have been able to help the, the, the food country, it, 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 may, it, it may not look like it is it's a big operation, but it's impacting families. And I believe that even after this lockdown, we will reflect back and see what the Lord has done. Because I believe that uh, with your uh, uh, donation uh, uh, for the food uh, for the for the food pantry, uh, He has gone and it has it's continued to touch lives. So God you should bless you, and I believe uh, also your time is coming where God is going to remember you for touching those who are in need. As I continue to to speak about the good work that the people and the church is doing. I cannot forget about last night uh, talk show. Uh, what an amazing, an amazing program! And I can assure you that uh, with the testimony that are coming, the lives that are being transformed, uh, nobody can believe that the talk show is only three weeks old. And phenomenal uh, feedback is coming uh, to, uh, through the, the program. So we give God all the glory for your support and the the, the, the leaders who have risen. And I believe that the programs are going to come up because we have been called to change the world. So God is you bless you. And I, I'm, I'm grateful to God for giving me this opportunity to be a pastor in this church. I believe for me, it is the best church in the world. And you are the best people. So even though those who are watching online uh, from other places, may God is you bless you. I believe your time has come. Let's share the scriptures in the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 13. That is where we are going to read, uh, to get our reading from uh, Numbers uh, 13. Uh, Numbers 13. Let's go there quickly. Numbers 13. It says, verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord. All of them men 
who were heads of their children of Israel. Now these were their, their names. From the tribe of Reuben, Shamwa, the son of Zakor, and from the tribe of Simeon, Shapat, the son of uh, Holai. And then number six, uh, verse six says, from the tribe of Judah, Kerem, the son of Jephunneh. Then we are going to uh, take note of that because the, that shall be our foundational uh, uh, character in this, in this uh, teaching today. Let's jump now. Let's go to the book of uh, the same book of Numbers 13, verse 21. It says, So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness. This is verse 21 of Numbers 13. Uh, so they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rio, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron. Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Enoch, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zohar in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshcol, and they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it in between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. Take note of that. Then the place was called the valley of Eshcol because of the clusters which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out of the land uh, after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Peret at Kadesh. They brought back word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. Then verse 30, uh, verse 27, it says, Then they told him, said, We went to the land where you sent us. It is truly full with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified. And, every right, and, and very right. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Enoch there. The Amalekites dwell in the land on the south, the Hittites, the Bud Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea around the banks of the Jordan. Then Kerem quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out, saying, The land throughout which you have gone as spies is a land that divides its inhabitants. All the people who, whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Then we saw giants. The descendants of Enoch came from the giants, and they were like grasshoppers. We were like grasshoppers. In our sight and so we were in their sight may the lord bless his word so we find ourselves in this uh we, we, we in reading this scripture in the book of numbers 13 and if you are taking notes i'd like you to take uh write it the title of the message today is god is looking for a caleb god is looking for a caleb we read this entire chapter of numbers 13 and i believe most of you have ever read uh, have read this chapter and maybe you have had it preached by different preachers. But I don't, I don't want you to say, oh, I know the chapter. Uh, I, I've read it. I've had it being preached many times. Please give me some few, the next few minutes. Let, could it be possible God has a word for you or for us that can be able to make you even see things in, in a different perspective? Because the word of God is new every day. So you might have had it many times. But I believe today God can give us a new word, a new revelation with, uh, from this chapter. So we see the story in this character, of, uh, that we, we see one character that stands out in this uh, book of Numbers chapter 13 and it comes by the name of Caleb. And we see that a, uh, uh, I want us to see, number one, we, 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 to see how he, how, how he stands out and why he stood out. One thing that I want us to understand is that if you are taking note, I want you to write a point number one that the, the Caleb anointing is available for us if only we understand how to take it. We are going to see how. So write it down that the Kerem anointing is available, available for us. We see that, uh, number one, Kerem, we see the story of uh, the children of Israel, the 12 spies, that out of the 10, 12 spies that were sent, only two had the confidence that they are able. Uh, only two had the confidence that they can go and conquer. But we had 10, who had a different report or a different perspective of the of the land 
that they saw. And we are going to look at, uh, because what we are going, what we learn from this uh, chapter, and we are going to learn from this chapter, is that in everything that we are going, ever going to achieve in life, it all goes down with a perspective. How you see things and who you trust. So if you trust in yourself, if you have what you call self-belief, and you have don't believe in God, or you don't believe that, uh, 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 that God is able, then you find yourself that maybe when your self-belief is gone, then you have nothing else to lean on. But when you have belief in God, that He is able to support you in every situation you might find yourself in, that whatever He has told you to do, or whatever His Word says that He is able to do, if you believe it, with the, it doesn't matter the, the size of the giants that, that may be standing your way, then you are going to overcome because our faith is not on ourselves. Our faith is in God who promised. And we are going to look at that today. So we can say this, and point number one is that uh, Caleb was a giant slayer in his spirit even before he slayed any giant. Caleb was a giant slayer in his spirit even he slayed any, before he slayed any giant uh, physically. So what does that mean? That it is his trust in God that gave him the audacity, the, the, the boldness to declare that uh, we are well able to do it. And so point number one is that we need to understand that uh, uh, to, to, to see what gave Caleb this confidence. And we are, as we read the scriptures uh, uh, today, we are going to see that it is his trust in the Lord. Trust and believe that uh, and, and sway uh, uh, trust and believe in God that made Caleb uh, to become that, uh, uh, that boy. One thing we understand here is that these men, they were sent to gather information. Remember very well, in the, uh, in the, in the book of uh, Numbers chapter 18, verse 20, they were told, just go and spy. Go and see what the land is. Whether the people who dwell in, the, in, in, in it are strong or weak. Whether they are few or many. And whether the land that they dwell in is good or bad. And whether the cities that they dwell in are camps or strongholds. And whether the land in, is rich or poor. And whether there are trees in it or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruits of the land. So they were not told, don't fight. Don't do anything. Just go gather information about this uh, land that the Lord is, uh, uh, is giving us. They were not also given jurisdiction of to determine victory. They were not told that as, uh, when you go there, that's where uh, things are going to happen. That, that, that you know, uh, when you go there, then we get the victory. No, 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 no. They were already assured. The promise was already given. The promise was already given that uh, the land belongs to you. It doesn't matter who occupies the land, but God had already given the assurance. So the God had sent them just go see the land. Moses to, uh, uh, instructed them uh, after he was instructed by God, just go spy the land and just bring back, uh, back the report of what you see in the land. Uh, I want you to see something here, that God had already promised his people victory several times, indicating that he was giving them this land. Just like many of us, there's a chapter, there's a scripture, there's, there's a word that God has given you. Maybe some of us, maybe you have a dream you have a dream maybe to establish a, a, a company. You have a dream maybe to start a school. You have a dream to start a, 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 a program. You have a dream to write a book. You have a dream uh, uh, to do great things. And listen, so most of these dreams that we have, and especially if they are dreams that pertains to uh, touching humanity, they are God-given dreams. And you know in your Noah that it is God that has put that desire in you. Bible says that it's him who causes us to do both to will and to do according to his great pleasure. So we the thing that we sometimes we think are ours, it is God who, who is prompting in us what we are he, he we are able to do or he is able to do through us. And so we see here that uh, just like the, the children of Israel were given the vision, uh, they were given the promise, then they were told, go and see. Going to see the land and spy the land is a type of a vision. So they were told, go see, which is a, like now what we are talking about is they are given, go see, meaning go capture the vision. 
of the land that I'm giving you. I've already spoken you to it. You have never been there. But I'll send spies. Uh, uh, just send spies who will go and see the, uh, the land. And when you capture the vision, then come back. Come back. That's what they were told. When you go, when you capture the vision of the land that you are supposed to occupy, come back with the fruit of that. This is amazing. So it is, uh, all these things are symbolic and I'm going to explain to you. But I want you to write it down here. That sometimes God is telling us to go forth into areas ordained for us to go. So there are areas where some of the dreams that you have is already what God has ordained for you. But listen, every great thing that you'll ever achieve or every good thing that you'll ever achieve you will never find it in a vacuum. You will always find the giants who occupy that place. Because, why? Because good things cannot just hang around by themselves. There will be opposition that, will, uh, that comes with the occupying or fulfilling your vision and, 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 and your dream. But listen, God has assured, just like he assured the children of the spies or the children of Israel, uh, 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 that I'm going to give you victory. But something happened here. Only two who believe. But this morning, I want us to, uh, as God is calling us, He's calling us to be the, the, the Kerem who are going to believe that that's what He has said concerning uh, our lives, concerning our destiny, that He is well able to bring it to pass. Listen to what He says here. The type of fruit, take it note, point number two, I want you to write it down. The type of fruit they took had a symbolic meaning. Write it down. The, the, the type of fruit they took back and a symbolic meaning. Number one, we see that they were uh, in, in verse 23 uh, of, this, of this verse, they say that then they came to the valley of Eshcol and they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it in, in between of them on a pole. Imagine how big it was that they had to be carried by a pole by two people. That is serious grape. I believe the size of the grapes was maybe the size of a mango, but that's how big it was. Then they also brought some, some, some of the pomegranates and figs, three types of fruit, but sim with a heavy sim uh, 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 symbolic meaning. Number one, whenever you see grapes mentioned in the Bible, it, it, it represents a covenant relationship with God. Grapes represent covenant relationship with God. Then you see pomegranate. Pomegranate represent God's glory, majesty, and righteousness. Pomegranate represent glory, majesty, and righteousness. Then the figs, they represent everlasting fruitfulness uh, and also is, is a symbol of prosperity, well-being, and security. Take note of that. Three fruits they came with. But these different fruits, they had symbolic meaning. So by seeing these uh, three, three fruits, uh, three different fru uh, fruits, uh, they, if they capture the liberation, and I believe maybe this is also what uh, 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 Joshua and Caleb captured, is that uh, grapes represent uh, uh, covenant, uh, covenant relationship with God. Omega represent God's glory, majesty, and righteousness. And uh, fig tree represent everlasting fruitfulness uh, and a symbol of prosperity, well-being, and security. So what this fruit represented was, it was just like God telling them, the land that you're going to go with, uh, to, uh, I'm giving you, I'm not just giving you because uh, you are good fighters. I'm not going to give you because you are, you, 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 are, you are good fighters. But I'm giving you this piece of land on the basis of the covenant that I have with you. Then, number two, uh, uh, I'm giving you this land because by me giving you this land, it will represent my glory, my majesty, and righteousness standing up righteousness means right standing with god so i'm giving you this land because of uh, the, the, of my god is, is like telling them i'm giving you this land for my glory and for my for, because of my majesty and because of the right standing you are righteous of the right standing with me and then he's saying the feet represent uh, fruitfulness and uh, prosperity, well-being and security. So God is telling them, uh, this land that I'm giving you, um, I'm also giving you, uh, is, is the land where you'll be fruitful. 
in everything that you will do in that land, you'll be fruitful. Then you'll be prosperous. Your well-being, you have, you'll have a good health even in that piece of land, in, in the land that I'm giving you. And then there will be security, meaning I'll be your security. Remember the prophetic word that God gave us this morning in the book of Psalms 125? Bible says that Jerusalem, as the mountains uh, surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds us. So what does that mean? That when you capture the vision of God, when you capture the vision of God, He gives, number one, He assures you, He gives us three things. Write it down. Point number three, when you capture the vision of God, God gives us three things. Number one, covenant relationship. Whereby you know that everything you do, I do. And everything I'm doing. Because I'm in a covenant relationship with God. What I'm doing is not only for myself, it is for God. And we are part, I'm a partner with God. So there's a covenant relationship with Him. Then, whatever I'm doing, it is to bring glory, majesty and righteousness. It is to bring glory to God. And as you bring glory to God, He also ref you reflect God's glory in your day-to-day -day life. So in everything that you do, you may do something that looks so small, but God glorifies it. Why? Because it is in line and it is the promise uh, of God. And that's what I'm saying today. And I believe God is calling us that we might be in a season whereby we, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. But God is calling for Caleb. Caleb, uh, who, people who will have the vision and the vision that sees beyond themselves. A vision, uh, they will not be faced by what they are hearing from the news. They, are not, they will be not be faced uh, by, by, by uh, what they keep on watching on, on the media. But they have believed that there is something that God has put in them. We may not know uh, what is happening, but we have a, we, we are partners with God that we do not stop dreaming because of this lockdown. We do not stop dreaming because of the challenges that we face. Listen, you will be challenged. Family members will challenge you, brothers and sisters will challenge you, neighbors will challenge you, friends will challenge you, and they will tell you it is not possible. They may give a bad report, but I want you to believe that with God have said it, it shall come to pass. Some of the vision that God has given us, they may take some time to come to pass. But I am persuaded like Caleb that whatever God has said will come to pass. It shall come to pass because God is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to repent. If we have said it, it shall come to pass. I don't know what God has said to you, but what we need to do, number one, is to capture the vision. The, 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 the fruit that they brought was a type of a vision of the assurance that God gave them. Uh, that God had, assured, uh, uh, had told them. And they, listen, number one, write it down that uh, we, we, if you have not captured the vision, provision will not come. If you have not captured the vision, provision will not come. Most of us, we try to look for provision first so that we can start a vision. But it's supposed to be the other way around. Capture the vision and provision will follow. Capture the vision and provision will follow. The reason why God sent, uh, told Moses, send the spies to see the land is because he wanted them to capture the vision of the land that they were to be given. He, God wanted them to capture the vision and see the big picture, to begin to dream of the land that they are going to occupy, to begin to see the, 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 the God's agenda. And God was telling them, yes, there may be giants in this uh, piece of land. There may be giants occupying, but I want you to have a vision and have an imagination of the good thing that you are going to occupy, or the, the, the beautiful land and the pro productive land that you are going to occupy. See it first. And God is going to provide. And He's also going to make a way. So today, uh, as we read these uh, 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 scriptures, I want you to understand that, uh, uh, that it's first of all seeing. Could it be possible God have told you to start a school, start a business? Some of you have been told even to, uh, to maybe try to, uh, to uh, start a project. Would it be possible some of you have been told to build? Some of you have been told to, uh, uh, to write a song? Some of you have been told maybe to create, uh, write a movie, to direct a movie? Some of you have been told maybe uh, start this program, start this project. But maybe you are still doing that and you are saying, uh, who am I? How will I do it? How will I do it? You know even some of you have seen it in a dream. But maybe you share with the wrong people. And you, you, some of you kept on procrastinating. But believe you me, if God have said it, don't, do not see the giant. See the giant slayer, who is God himself. And when you capture the vision of God, he is able to partner with you. And you will have the same spirit, the same spirit that Caleb had, the spirit of a giant slayer. And we are going to see that. So, 
So I, 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 I say it again, the any vision that is God given comes with this provision. So we say number one, his foundation is a uh, is covenant, is covenant, his foundation is a covenant relationship with God. So if God has given you a, a, a vision, you have this assurance that its foundation is a covenant relationship with God, um, which was a type of the, the, the symbolic meaning was grapes. Then it comes with glory, majesty, and righteousness. So whatever you do has an expect on it. Because whatever you do, because it is of God, it comes with glory. Even you may be doing something, it looks in your eyes look small, but God is, has a way of amplifying it. It looks great and big. Then, in everything that God has called you to do, you'll never be barren. You'll be forever fruitful. Amen. Amen. And I believe this is shall be your portion. So, point number four: we must be have a different spirit, like Kerry. If we are to become giant, giant slayers, we must be uh, uh, a, a, a different spirit like Caleb. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. God said of Caleb, because he has, he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land into which he went, and his de descendant shall possess it. God actually is the one who is giving a witness that Caleb is of a different spirit. I looked at the meaning of the word Kerem because uh, everything you see in the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, the names are very, very symbolic and they have a meaning. Just like I told you, when you see the grapes, they represent a uh, covenant relationship. When you see pomegranates, they represent uh, uh, majesty, glory, and righteousness. Uh, when you see fig tree, they represent security, they represent uh, uh, prosperity, they represent uh, 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 fruitfulness. But then also the name Kerem has a meaning. And uh, I looked at it. Uh, Number one, uh, the word from it comes from the uh, from the root word kereb, uh, which surprisingly I don't say, oh, pastor, I thought you started well, but actually the word kereb also means dog. But hold on, don't say, oh, pastor, where are you going with uh, you calling kereb a dog? No, but the root word uh, 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 of the word kereb uh, it comes from the, uh, the word kereb, which means dog. But in this time, dog is not being used in the negative. Twice the Bible, has, in, 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 twice in the Bible, the dog's character has been shown on the positive. And we are going to look at that uh, uh, before even I define Kerem. Uh, 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 the word, uh, the, the first. Okay, let me define for you first. Kerem means uh, in some tradition, Kerem beings a dog symbolizes his devotion to God. An alternate Hebrew meaning offered for Kireb is faithful devotion, wholehearted, bold, and brave. This is on the basis of it being actually a compound word, a phenomenon quite common in ancient Hebrew. The, other only, the only other time the word uh, dog uh, character has been used in the in the positive is in the word worship. The word worship in Greek, uh, uh, the New Testament word uh, was written in Greek, and the most common Greek word trans to translate as worship is proskuneo. Proskuneo means to kiss or to rig, as is as is to kiss the hand of a superior or a master. Uh, it also shows uh, some scholars believe the word actually is derived from the idea of a dog licking its master's hand. Listen, uh, maybe most of you maybe have never, maybe in a family where you brought up with a dog, but dog is a very faithful servant. And I believe uh, the reason why the, the word care is, uh, it has that connotation of, of a character of a dog is, 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 is faithfulness, meaning trusting fully. And if you have ever kept uh, a dog or you, you have a dog in your house, you know that dogs, if you have trained the dogs properly, the dogs are very faithful servants. I've had stories whereby maybe somebody died, but the dog could not, be, could not leave uh, the house or, or, or the side of the master when the master died because of the faithfulness. So the word kereb here is a symbolic meaning of faithfulness, a devotion, a wholehearted, bold, brave, and standing strong. So we understand that now Caleb was somebody who was very, very strong and bold. 
and standing strong in God's promises. And he never wavered. And God is calling us today not to waver. Listen, anything, people may say anything. The news may say all this and this. But if you have God have said that he's going to make a way for you where there is no way, stand on the promises of God. God may have given you a vision of your family. He have shown you that he's going to, uh, your family is going to stand. You, you, you're going to do exploit. Maybe your, your, your marriage is going to stand. There, there's that vision of the exploit of your children, that your children are going to do exceedingly well in their studies. They will have good families. They will have a good foundation. But then there may be something that is right now, maybe where you are right now, it may be contrary to the vision that God gave you about your family. God gave you about your dream, uh, your vision, or your business. But listen, it is standing in times of challenges that builds you more. And, and actually provoke God to move towards your direction. Some of us maybe, or some of you, maybe sometimes you may you had a dream and maybe you experienced an, an opposition. You experience an, 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 an unexpected challenge. And maybe you, after the challenge, you maybe you thought maybe you, your dream, which was so big, you, you downsized. It's common for people to downsize their dream when they face challenges. But we see Caleb here, though he faced the challenge because people did not support his vision of what he saw, he did not downsize the vision. And I beg you by the masses of God, if you have seen nations, if you have seen schools, if you have seen uh, great things, if you have seen you uh, yourself successful, don't downsize your vision or your dream because of the challenges. Challenges will come, but they should find your vision, your faith to know that God is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? If God has said that he's going to give you, uh, has promised you the land, has promised you what he show, show, showed you, he is able to bring it to come to pass. So be like Caleb. Be that you are faithful in worship, you are faithful in dedication, you are faithful, you are trusting God that your vision will come to pass. Listen, you may have lost everything according to the eyes of men, but in the eyes of God you don't lose anything. Because what happened, what we think that we have lost as human beings, in actual fact, when you stand on the promises of God, we are building. And he who is able to do exceeding abundantly, more than we can be able, uh, able to ask or, uh, uh, or imagine, According to the power that works in us, it is that belief that God is with me. My vision is standing. My children will, will succeed. My dream is, will, is come to pass. All what God has said concerning me, it shall come to pass. But then, I need to be quick. I have three points to cover. For us to be able to capture this, the current spirit, we must be, have a vision that is beyond us. We must have, for us to capture, for us to be able to capture the, 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 the spirit of Caleb, to be like Caleb, somebody who pleases God, then we must have a vision that is beyond us. The, uh, what does I'm going by this? Uh, Caleb did not see the vision, uh, did not see the land only for himself. He saw it as an opportunity for the children of Israel, as an entire nation, to go and occupy. So he had a vision for the entire nation. It was not about him. Listen, if the vision you have is only about you, listen, the vision that if it is for you, you will die with it. And that's the end of the vision. But we need God is calling us to dream with him, to see the vision with him. Begin to prepare yourself. Who will, if, for example, if Jesus study, who is going to uh, be your heir? How many people will benefit with the vision that you have? Is it only you and your children? Is it only you? If you die today, could it be possible? You will never remember you. We will remember the tea and the, uh, 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 and, uh, and, the, and the biscuit that we eat during your, uh, your memorial service. No, we need to remember you. We need to remember the works, to remember the vision that you read, to remember that you have read prepared the, the thought the vision that you had was beyond you just like Caleb and that's why God is calling us we might be in crisis now but we are not held captive God nobody can hold captive your mind we are not stopped we are nobody can arrest our imagination we are God is calling us to imagine visualize what is the future of your children visualize what is the future of your community what is the impact what are you what is the legacy that you're leaving for them how will you be remembered what did you leave? Because everybody has that. God has called you to change a nation. God has called you to make a difference. God has called you to influence. And just like Caleb, we need to dream and begin to see things beyond ourselves, beyond our families, that our vision 
we, we are writing it down in the template, but we know that even there's those who might come after us, they will come and find a ground that's already been prepared by somebody who's so beyond himself. So we have to be like Caleb. Point number six, Caleb faith prepared an inheritance for his future family lineage. Caleb prepared an inheritance for his future family lineage. How did he do this? Remember that the scripture that we read in the book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 6. We know that Caleb was from the tribe of Judah. That Caleb, when he being from the tribe of Judah, we know if you look at the tribe of Judah, this is many years to come, we came to know somebody by the name of David. The only other person who was able to slay a giant. After David, the people that he raised, they were also able to slay giants. But what, where, where did the anointing of slaying giants came from? It came from the great, great grandfather, Caleb, who did not fear the giant. So because he had the spirit and the grace and the, and the faith, this thing went into his family lineage. That one of his great, great, great grandson will become a giant slayer. And listen, what you do right now, it has a way of impacting your children and your children's children. So what you are doing right now, either for the positive or for the negative, you are preparing a giant slayer or a people who shall give bad report. I repeat, right now where you are, either you are among the two who give the good report and you are raising a generation that gives good report, or either you are raising a generation of the 10 that gave bad report. What do I mean by this? So if you are... Uh, your character and the way you carry yourself and the way you plan yourself and the way you do things and the, the way you talk in the presence of your children, what is happening right now, either you are raising giant slayers or people who will always give bad report. It's your choice. What do you want to do? Do you want to raise giant slayers? Do you want to leave a lineage, a legacy of giant slayers of people of, who give bad report? And this brings us to uh, the conclusion of our preaching today with the seven, uh, with the point number seven, which means uh, uh, um, uh, that we, we should mentor a generation to and make history with God. Brothers and sisters, I can concur with you this word uh, that it came from God because yesterday we had a meeting with the youth. And uh, one of the youth leaders, uh, she mentioned uh, about mentorship, of how we can be able to start in the church, the mentorship of uh, the elders mentoring the younger and the younger mentoring the, the, the youngest. So um, it's amazing because this week we were also doing a program, uh, uh, preparing a document for the men. And one of the, our agenda for as men is to mentor the young generation. And I believe this is a timely word that brothers and sisters, that if we as Christians, we are not intentional on mentoring the next generation, we'll have done a disservice to the kingdom of God. And you see, uh, uh, Caleb, his character, we still read about him right now because he did not see the giant. He had a good report. He, he knew that God is able. And he, we are still reading about him right now, many thousand uh, of years back, because he was able to mentor a generation by a good testimony. Right now, brothers and sisters, I, I, I really want to provoke your comfort zone and begin to think, if right now, if somebody ap uh, uh, approaches me to mentor them, what will I tell them? And listen, nobody will approach you if you have not been conscious that you can be a mentor. And when you begin to carry yourself as a mentor, you begin to watch how you speak. You begin to watch how you carry yourself because the generation is watching. The younger generation, they are watching. They, they are looking what this man or this woman is doing. And believe you me, brothers and sisters, I believe we are in a, uh, in a situation uh, whereby the, 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 the old ways, we need to subscribe to the old ways. Bible says that stand on the path and ask of the old uh, stand up on the junction and inquire of the old path. One of the old paths is mentoring our generation. And listen, we have to have this kind of spirit. We must be intentional in mentoring the generation that is coming up. We must pass on the baton. And not, let's not just give stories. Let us give back a substance that they will say, our fathers, our mothers, our, our, our leaders, our elders, 
they bequeath us something that, that is substance that, that, that is of substance brothers and sisters we can have all excuses we can say that we are busy we can say that maybe we don't have money we can say that we don't have time but brothers and sisters if we partner with god he will do all he'll make all things possible bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you one of the things of seeking the kingdom of god is becoming a men, be, uh, uh, mentoring the next generation we need to pass the right baton to this generation by the way we behave the way we carry ourselves the way we communicate in our homes the way we do the thing that we do but we are intentional that i am i'm going to mentor a generation listen to what the bible says here uh, 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 as we read the story of, of, of Caleb, one of the things that uh, not the bible actually one of the things that maybe god is calling us to do uh, mature readers and wise parents will desire for the next generation to grab the torch take up the mantle and learn with the vision they will cheer them on to go further into the land that they do not have they do not have time to conquer listen brothers and sisters some of the vision that you may have you may have a big vision some of you have seen yourself maybe filling stadium when you're seeing uh, uh, some of you have seen uh, giving advice to governments some of you have seen the opening hospitals listen you may have these dreams but some of the dreams yes you may read the foundation but could it be possible is our children who are going to finish or going to establish even the, uh, uh, the, uh, the end picture of the vision but we need to raise them raise them, uh, raise them with this intention that we are not just raising them up to grow uh, just to become uh, just ordinary people but we are raising them to be giant, uh, giant slayers but we have to be intentional so this is my prayer for you that uh, you will desire that care of anointing, uh, uh, that we are, you'll be unwavering. You will not be faced by what you hear. You will not be faced by what you see. Listen here as I wind up in the book of Psalms, uh, in the book of Numbers 13, verse 33, that it says, And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which you have gone to spy is a land that divides its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw there that they are men of great stature. There we saw giants, verse 33, and we were like grasshoppers in our sight. So we were in their sight. I've used this message uh, statement before. Bible is telling us here, they say that we saw ourselves, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. The perception you have about yourself is the perception that people have about you. How you see yourself, if you see yourself that I cannot do it, if you see yourself as just a, a, another ordinary man or another ordinary woman, how you see it is how life will treat you. If you see yourself as a doormat, if you carry yourself cheap, people will carry you cheap. If you see yourself as, as uh, this is the only high you can achieve because of your current background, your, where you came from, or, or your gender or your age how you see yourself is how people see you but listen it is the perspective we need to change our identity how not how where you were born or how you were brought up uh, i have i have no problem with culture i have no problem with my background but listen when you become born again we have a new identity my background now is uh, my perspective of who, what I can do and what I can achieve is based on the word of God. If God says I can do it, I can do it. Bible says as a man thinketh, so he, he is. So I have to begin to renew my mind to think like God because if I think what the, uh, what the word of God says and I think because thinking the, what the word of God says I am or believing what the word of God says I am and believing it and thinking it through, it makes me become what it says I can become. And listen, brothers and sisters, you are a giant slayer. I have this belief that God has called you for such a time like this. You have been called to start the domino effect. You have been called to start something new that even some people will ask, where did he, well, I've never heard of him. But you shall say like Abraham Lincoln said, I prepared and I waited because it is in this preparation as you continue to dream, to see the end picture of what God has seen, to, to, uh, uh, call you to do, that you become what God has, has called you to do. Brothers and sisters, don't shy off. Don't be intimidated. Don't listen to the report. Don't see what the people are saying. Even your friend may be discouraged, uh, discourage you. Listen, the cheapest commodity we have in life 
is your opinion because everybody has his. Listen, people will tell you their opinion, but they are telling their opinion from their perspective. But if you have seen the perspective of God, dream with God. Don't downsize your, pro, uh, your, your project. Don't downsize, downsize your vision. God, if God has put a desire in you, if you know that it is God who has called you to do it, he'll, He has given you the vision, He'll give you the provision, and He'll give you the right people. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his, He lift up His countenance upon you. May He strengthen you and watch over you. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, the best way to begin to dream with God, to realize the vision and the desires and the, uh, of your heart is by accepting, accepting Him as your personal Savior. So uh, if, you, if you have not given your life to Jesus, uh, make this prayer, say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner, but also believe that you are the Son of God, that you died and you rose again. And today I accept you into my life. Come live in me. Uh, I accept you to be the Lord of my life. From today, I acknowledge you as my Savior. And from today I'm born again. I'll live for you all the days of my life. If you have made that prayer, uh, call that number on the screen, uh, inbox us on the Facebook page, or you can write an email to us and somebody's going to uh, make a follow-up uh, 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 to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and strengthen you. We love you so much and we are praying for you. The dream that God has given to you, it shall come to pass. Believe you me, some of you have been called to the government mountain. Some of you have been called to the education mountain. Some of you have been called uh, into religion mountain. Some of you have been called to arts, arts and entertainment. Some of you have been called to media. Some of you have been called to business mountain. Some of you have been called to the family mountain. Whichever mountain that God has called you, embrace it. Go and influence. Make a difference. Listen, don't fear. God is with you. Looking forward to see you again. And uh, implement the thing that we have shared and you are giant slayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you again tomorrow. God bless you. Two men bring an offering to the Lord, one of the fruit of the ground, the other the firstborn of his flock. God accepts one and rejects the other. Why? Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. The word tells us clearly that the offering Abel brought was the firstborn of his flock. But it doesn't say that Cain brought the first fruits of his crops. It simply says, in the process of time, Cain brought an offering. Cain harvested his crops and over time gathered enough to bring an offering. It was an offering on Cain's terms. God accepted Abel's offering because it was the first of his increase. Cain's offering was rejected because it wasn't the first of his. Giving the first to God requires faith. When a firstborn lamb is born in a flock, it's not possible to know how many more lambs that you might produce. But Abel gave his firstborn lamb in faith, whereas Cain made sure he had enough for himself before giving to God. Many of us treat God the same way as Cain, making sure we have enough money before we see if there's anything left for God. Even if we give from what's left over, God can't accept the offering because it's not the first fruit. Other stories emphasize this truth. In the account of the fall of Jericho, 
the Lord gave strict instructions that the Israelites were not to keep any of the spoils from Jericho. All of it belonged to him, the Lord declared. Jericho belonged to the Lord because it was the first city conquered in the Promised Land. It was the first fruits. God withheld his blessing from Israel when one man took some of the spoils for himself. The first belongs to God. There was much more at stake than money when Abraham offered his firstborn son Isaac. When God asked for his son, Abraham didn't wait to have ten sons before giving Isaac. He gave the first when he only had one to give. Abraham had only the promise of having more sons. It took faith for Abraham to offer Isaac. Faith that God respected and blessed. And God did the same for us. He gave his first in the form of his son, his first and only begotten son, who was given to us while we were still sinners. God gave Jesus in faith that we might one day give our lives to him. The gift of his son came before the blessing of our repentance and salvation. We give our first fruits in much the same way. Before we see the blessing of God, we give it in faith. Giving the first fruits of your income says to God, I recognize you first. I am putting you first in my life, and I trust you to take care of the rest.